ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كل بدعة ضلالة. Other question, are the Salafis split and amongst or many claim that the Salafis uh, that they're Salafi but aren't united with with the Salafis. What, what's that? Okay, I'm not sure what that means. But but basically, um, what we have to understand is. There, there are some things which are very, very clear and very apparent to us, alhamdulillah. Like we know that within the Muslim nation, there are different uh, sects and groups, and they are very apparent and clear, right? Any Muslim knows that if somebody says the companions are all disbelievers and they left Islam, everybody knows this is misguidance, right? The Rafidah, the Shia, who say this. We all know this is misguidance. Sufis who worship graves. We know this from our fitra, this is wrong and this is misguidance. There are some things which are very clear and apparent to, to the average person, right? Certain sects, certain groups. However, where it becomes confusing, and especially in the modern era, in the contemporary time, where many, many people have realized, hang on, that if we ascribe to the Salaf, it will give us some legitimacy, right? We, we, we will, you know, we will... We will um, uh, even to be honest with you, even like the Sufis now and other people, they try to make it look as if they are following the, the way of the Salaf. But the point being that amongst those who claim Salafiyyah, there are many who claim Salafiyyah, but in reality, if you look at their methodology, if you look at their behavior, if you look at their positions, if you look at their alliances, they cannot be reconciled with the way of the Salaf. And there are many, many people out there in the field giving da'wah online, you know, calling people, taking advantage of the internet, of the tube, uh, you know, trying to call people and draw people into their web, all under the guise of being upon the way of, of the Salaf. So as we were saying that, uh, many, many people who <clears throat> make use of the internet, the tube, the social media, and making an ascription to Salafiyyah, they try to draw audiences towards themselves and when we look at them uh, their positions their loyalties their allegiances the methodology through which they give da'wah it is very very clear that they are not upon upon salafiyyah for example a person claims to be salafi he goes to another country for example and then in all all the places he visits they are they are, they are the places of, of the ikhwanis places of maybe the sufis you know he sits on their platforms give da'wah this how, how, how can this be reconciled? And there you were there not to call them to, to Salafiyyah, you were there to just teach them things about, you know, marriage and divorce or good manners or, you know, or you might even speak about Tawheed, but not, not in the way where you distinguish clearly between the people of truth and the people of falsehood, right? It's more to just to expand the audiences, you know, that you, that, that, that you want. So we can see, we know from, from a person's da'wah, his conduct, his loyalty, his allegiance, his friendship, whom he visits, <coughs> all of these things are very, very clear signs to show whether a person is truly following the foundations of the Salafi methodology or not. Anyway, that's, that's one aspect to the, to the question. The other aspect is, yes, the people of the Sunnah, when they see misguidance and they see mistakes, in foundations and errors from amongst themselves, they will correct that and they will treat it in accordance with the, the right way. So from time to time, there may be someone who from among the people of the Sunnah, his heart changes, he deviates, he falls into error, misguidance, he invents new principles and so he's advised by the scholars and he chooses his path and so the Salafis abandon him and leave him because he's chosen his path of misguidance. Yes, this happens from time to time. And historically speaking, over the past 20, 30 years, we know many, many individuals making an ascription to Salafiyyah, uh, spoken of and refuted by the scholars, such as, for example, Abdul Rahman Abdul Khaliq, Adnan Arur, Abu Hassan al Ma'rabi, and uh, more recently, you have the likes of Al Hajuri, and you know, so on and so forth. The, the, so this shows that the people of the Sunnah do not accept error and misguidance, even if it is from someone who is within their ranks and beloved to them, when that person persists upon his mistakes and his errors, right? So now to an onlooker, someone who's unlocking, they will see this, ah, oh, look at this, they all split. We have this group over here, the Hajuris, and this group over here, the, this ones and that, and they all, no. 
that's how you see it from your you know from your from your kind of blinded vision but we see it as you know we don't do not compromise the truth and we are not blind followers and even if one amongst us goes astray and makes a mistake then it's our duty to clarify that as opposed to these people these people won't do that right? they won't do that they won't speak the truth and they won't they will make mujam and they will make compromise and flattery of people who make mistakes and errors whereas we as people of the same we don't do that right so sadly um you know the, these people who have this like perception towards uh, salafia then they are they're not looking at it honestly and truthfully from the point of view of, of knowledge and weighing everything by the book and by the sunnah and um, as i mentioned here of uh, a couple of individuals uh, uh, as i mentioned here of what's your advice to those who take knowledge from the likes of abu taymiyyah and are sincerely looking for the truth you don't take knowledge from people like abu taymiyyah uh, this man is a the ignorant youth um this is this is the fitna of the internet in that you know anyone can come along and he can market himself using adobe photoshop and uh you know youtube and uh you know making make himself out to be a, a, a grand sheikh and uh, claim he's upon the way of the salaf and not, none of this none of this is true this individual although i don't want to make a whole lecture out of this now uh, but this is just a confused individual uh, he was a sufi a grave worshipper in yemen then he spent some time uh, with al hajuri um and al hajuri kind of deviated and then he spent some time defending al hajuri for a while and then he was with some of these other people uh, dawaman and uh, you know some of the medina.com people um and then more recently uh, he's found the tube and what he does is he steals other people's um speech and insight on issues and pretends he is the one who's basically coming out with them right so there's videos where for example he'll take word for word something from Andrew Tate you know this Andrew Tate right so he's got two he's got two phones with him in his car sat in his car in one phone or one device or he's maybe he's got maybe he's got it written out he's got the words of Andrew Tate written out like this and then when he's doing his podcast through his other phone his you know through his live broadcast through instagram whatever it might be he's standing there going yes and you know he's he's rattling off the intellectual observation whatever it was i can't remember now deceiving his audience into thinking that he's the one who's making this great you know intellectual insight about society and youth and whatever and it's just word for word stealing it from andrew tate right so this this individual is just like a performance artist right they are good actors how to put on the act and put on the show right you see if you look at his images of of his youtube videos he'll have like sheik albani here and sheik bin baz or sheik nuthi mean here in the background you know and then him in the middle with the light you know uh the 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 focus light on him all of this is self promotion right you don't need to listen to this man you just need to just look at the images and what he's doing and you know this is a clown from the very beginning right the, these these are people who uh, their character is dishonest and dishonesty is clear and apparent from what they do they take other people's insights works you know observations steal it word for word and then try to pretend as if it's as if it's theirs and then to build you know kind of a an image of oneself so the, the these type of pretenders have always existed throughout history and the great danger today is that it's very 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 easy to put on this type of show because the technology exists the media exists and also because you know it's not very hard to teach and especially if you've grasped the Arabic language because you can just pick up any book and start teaching you know and to an audience who's not really familiar um you you can come across as as a very very learned uh, person and that's exactly what he's doing he's taking advantage of the fact that many many people have a thirst for knowledge they want knowledge 
and it's like a huge open kind of like a market, to, so to speak, that if you can position yourself in the right way and make yourself out to be, you know, whatever, 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 whatever image you're presenting, you can get a large, large following. And that's exactly what people like uh, Abu Taymi have done. And there's others like him as well, uh, Muhammad Hijab. You know, this, this has all come about in the era of the tube, of, of the video where you can, you know, pro, uh, you can broadcast yourself and your voice and, you know, a tremendous tribulation uh, of the age, you know, when you have everybody calling left, right and center and you can't tell who's genuine, who's not genuine. Uh, because you don't know their history and the background. And so I advise you not to, not to listen to uh, people like this. Uh, and you don't need too much knowledge or intelligence to see through people like that, to be honest with you. You can just see the way the man is promoting himself and you know, it's, it just doesn't fit with you know, anything which is genuine, scholarly. You know, uh, it's very clear and apparent. So avoid these people. Uh, I know there may be many thousands of people genuinely seeking knowledge and they are taken in by the dazzle and the display and uh, but this is this is how it is this this is how people get misled and deceived by these types of uh, things and by these types of uh, individuals anyhow there's a lot more that can be can be said for example you know he tried to defend one of his teachers abdurrahman hassan you know abdurrahman hassan is in the emirates now he returned from wherever he was uh, he had kind of some shady teachers in Egypt and elsewhere. But he returned to the UK and he tried to be clever and smart and started to debate with some hardcore takfiris and khawarij. Right? The Hizbut Tahrir follower that he went to debate with. So he went to him, met with him, praised him, came, he raised up a pen. He said, look, I have a pen here. I've come, I've come as a student to learn from this man. And this man... He makes takfir of the rulers, declares Ibn Baz, Albani, all the scholars to be apostates, disbelievers, Mecca and Medina to be uh, Darul, uh, Darul Harb, Darul Kufr, whatever it might be. And he's flattering this man. I've come to you with my pen here as a student. And then he's trying to debate him. And he can't even win him in the debate about you know, the, these positions. And then when, he was, when it was said to him that what you did was wrong, and Sheikh Abu Hadija, Sheikh Abdul Ilah, they refuted this man and what he did. He then came out to try and defend himself by saying, why are you attacking me for sitting with this Khariji Tahriri when the Prophet وسلم, himself and Ibn Abbas himself, they praised the Khawarij. So you know, he tried to use this to defend himself, right? But this is a lie against the Prophet وسلم, because Muslim wasn't praising the Khawarij when he said that you will belittle your prayer to their prayer, you will belittle your, the, the Quran. He wasn't intending to praise them, right? Rather, he was actually saying, speaking about how vain their actions will be, that these actions seem, seem to be so great and appealing, but it, it's all based upon uh, nothing, right? It was a dispraise of them. Right? So he tried to defend himself and then when five or six of the scholars spoke against him and this, these kind of shenanigans of his, then he tried to make a pretense of you know, taking it back and whatever. But in all of this was Abu Taymiya and Dawaman trying to defend this individual blindly and fanatically without consideration of the actual evidence. Right? So these people are not people who they're not grounded in knowledge. They've just found the tube, they found the internet, found the, the, the media, just like a child finds like a toy and is excited with the toy. And then they're just using it for uh, calling to whatever, you know, calling to, to, in the case of Abu Taymi, calling to himself as a personality, as a Sheikh of Islam, as a, you know. So we need to, we need to be clear and to see through these types of individuals. Right? And to warn against these individuals because they, they take the sincere desire which is found in many, many Muslims in this age and era to want to learn, to get closer to Allah and they take advantage of that, that emotion and that feeling and in reality they hinder people from the path of Allah by taking them to a certain level and then they, just, they, they want to hinder them from, from, from many aspects of the truth. So we have to be careful about these people and, and warn against these uh, people. 
Allah knows best. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.